Hello, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to take up a lesson from NCERT's English textbook for class 10. The name of the textbook is First Flight and the name of the story is Madam Rides the Bus. Shall we begin with the story? Have you noticed that in films and cartoons whenever they show a child and their perspective the camera goes a bit lower. Adults, buildings and objects are often seen from below to show the perspective of a child. In literature also there are devices that are used by authors to demonstrate the point of view of children. Sometimes this is expressed through humor, sometimes through confusion at how adults think and often through games that children like to play. Take a look at your local newspaper. Do you have it right now with you? I am giving you 30 seconds. Bring one newspaper and then I will continue. Okay. Take a look at your local newspaper and identify any cartoons or comic strips written from the point of view of children. Discuss with your family what aspects of children's and adults lives are shown in them. If you do not find any you can look for Amul Butter ads where a young girl and her expressions and comments are used to reflect on current affairs. So that is how we built in the perspective of children when we are writing something and this is the technique that authors use. The lesson that we are discussing today Madam Rides the Bus also shows the point of view of a young girl. The author of this story was renowned Tamil writer, journalist and translator. Though his name was R. K. Krishnaswamy, he wrote under a few pseudonyms and Valli Kanan is one of them. Krishnaswamy started writing at a very young age and had published about 25 books by the age of 30. That is amazing. He wrote 75 books spanning various genres such as poetry, plays, essays, short stories and novels in his lifetime. He was also awarded the prestigious Sahitya Academy award in 1978 for his critical works on modern Tamil poetry. So now we know about the author and now we are going to discuss the story. Through the character of Walli, Walli is the name of that young girl. In Madam Rides the Bus, Walli Kanan depicts the curious nature of children. Children are by nature very curious. Even if they are very young, they want to touch everything, they want to taste everything. And when they grow up a little, when they start walking, they want to explore everything. And then there is no end to the exploration. They want to explore things further ahead. They want to experience new things with great eagerness. Through this story too, we get to see the world from the perspective of a child. The experience of her first bus ride has been depicted in a humorous and in a very interesting way. Please note this story was translated from Tamil to English by S. K. Sundaram and has been illustrated by the famous cartoonist R. K. Lakshman. Open your books on page 116 and 117. Look at the cartoon. You will really appreciate it. Before I take up the story, there is one activity. Now look at the words and phrases given below, I am going to share them with you. Then put a tick against the ones you think you will find in the text. This requires some imagination on your part. How would a bus journey be? Right? Who all would be there with you? 
think of the scene and select what you think fits and the words are a set of passengers, get on the bus, get off the bus, the slack time of day, tickets please, a roar and a ratter, a row of seats, slowing down to a crawl. You see all these words you will come across in the lesson and make sure that when you are writing a story or you are describing a journey then probably you can use these phrases while you are writing a story. So are you ready with it? You please open your books on page 116 but there is another activity before that. You must have travelled by bus at some point. Yes, all of us do to go to school or to visit your relatives or to see another town or city. What can you usually see from a fast moving bus? So note down what you see from the bus and what is the feeling? How do you feel about it? This task you must do. Once you have written down, please share it with your friends. You can also share it with your teachers, right? And you can send them to us also. Uh, we will surely get back to you. Maybe when you are trying to write, you are trying to describe, you will find that, you know, you find rivers, green fields, hills, roadside shops, marketplaces, railway tracks, moving trains, vehicles on the road, trees, a crowd, clothes in shops, animals, all these things you see. Now the next task is, well, if you are at home, you can share this with your parents or with your friends. Now speak briefly about some of these scenes or about other such scenes that you have seen or you can write a sentence or two about what you saw and experienced and then you can develop it into a paragraph. Once you have written one or two paragraphs, you can further develop it into a story. Make sure that you write the description in your own words. Don't copy it from anywhere else. And now that we are going to read this story, you will come across how the author has described all these things through the perspective of a child, a young girl. So when I am reading, note down these phrases which you might useful when you are writing on your own. So shall we begin with the story now? It is on page 117. There was a girl named Valiamai who was called Vali for short. She was 8 years old and very curious about things. Her favorite pastime was standing in the front doorway of her house watching what was happening in the street outside. There were no playmates of her own age on her street and this was about all she had to do but for Wally standing at the front door was every bit as enjoyable as any of the elaborate games other children played. Watching the street gave her many new unusual experiences. Her observation power was very strong and I think I want to share it with you that great writers have keen observation. So you also start observing things around you minutely and then reflect on that and that that will give you an idea how to write a beautiful piece. The most fascinating thing of all was the bus that traveled between her village and the nearest town. It passed through her street each hour, once going to the town and once coming back. The sight of the bus filled each time with a new set of passengers was a source of delight for Wali. Day after day, she would stand on her door and watch the bus and gradually a tiny wish 
crept into her head and grew there. What could have been her wish? She wanted to ride on that bus. Even if just once, this wish became stronger and stronger until it was an overwhelming desire. Does it happen with you also students? That you desire for something, you then you know it becomes strong and then you want to do it. If that's the case, note down what is it and then we will discuss about it later. Wally would stare wistfully at the people who got on and off the bus when it stopped at the street corner. Their faces would kindle in her longings, dreams and hopes. Underline these three words, longings, dreams and hopes. Do you also long for something and when you long for something that becomes your dream because you cannot forget about it during the day or at night and then you hope to get it. So when you desire to get it, what do you do? You work hard, you make plan to achieve that. It can happen with any one of us, okay? This is a part and parcel of our life. And what was Wally's desire? Her desire was to ride that bus. If one of her friends happened to ride the bus and tried to describe the sights of the town to her, Wally would be too jealous to listen and would shout in English, proud, proud. Neither she nor her friends really understood the meaning of the word, but they used it often as a slang expression of disapproval. You see, Wally must have picked up the word proud from somewhere. So if anyone described the town, she would say proud, proud. Actually, they are, you know, being proud of something which others have not experienced. So it was used as a slang and it was an expression of disapproval. Over many days and months, Wally listened carefully to conversations between her neighbors and people who regularly use the bus. And she also asked a few discreet questions here and there because she didn't want to reveal her plans. So she asked very discreet questions. Discreet means not very obvious. This way she picked up various small details about the bus journey. The town was six miles from her village. The fare was 30 pies one way, which is almost nothing at all. She heard one well-dressed man say, but to Wally, who scarcely saw that much money from one month to the next, it seemed a fortune. Yes, obviously for a child at that time, 30 pies would, would have been a big sum. And why would she get that money from her parents? Therefore, the trip to the town took 45 minutes. On reaching town, if she stayed in her seat and paid another 30 pies, she could return home on the same bus. So she was planning an eight-year child and she's making a plan to ride the bus. This meant that she could take the one o'clock afternoon bus, reach the town at about 45 and be back home by about 2.45. On and on went her thoughts as she calculated, recalculated, planned and replanned. Look at the words now. Calculated, recalculated. Planned, replanned. We all do that. We plan our timetable. If we feel something has been left out, we replan it. So in her mind, even Wally was planning her visit to the town. Do you think she wanted to visit the town? Not really. She wanted to ride the bus. She wanted to experience that. I hope part one is clear to you. We stop here for comprehension check.
I am going to ask you a few questions. They are there in your book also on page 119 and then we will discuss. My first question is, have you ever felt a strong desire to get something or to do something that is a secret wish? What would be the fair means to get that? You must note down your points. What is your secret wish that you want to fulfill? It can be to do something, it can be to get something, right? Have you noted it down? Now I want you to write about it. How would you manage to get it? But your means should be fair. You are not going to cheat your friends or you are not going to cheat your elders. Fair means, fair means means it might require a lot of hard work, it might require discipline, it might require a strong willpower to get it. Okay, so I am giving you 30 seconds, please note down. You have noted down your points, you can share your points, your secret wish. Would you like to with your friends, with us? If you do not wish to, never mind, you can keep it in your diary, safekeeping and then work towards it to get it. My next question is, what was Wally's favorite pastime? Her favorite pastime was standing in the front doorway of her house and looking at the street outside. Have you ever done that? Maybe sometimes or sometimes I have you know seen that children sit in the window, window sill and keep watching in, in the street. Many children do like that. Next question, what was a source of unending joy for Wally? And what was her strong desire? The sight of the bus that traveled between her village and the nearest town, filled each time with a new set of passengers, was a real source of unending joy for Wally. Her strongest desire was to ride the bus. So that was her favorite pastime. She was fascinated by that bus. Next question, what did Wally find out about the bus journey? How did she find out these details? Wally found out that the bus journey to the town took 45 minutes and the one way fare was 30 paisa. She listened carefully to the conversations between her neighbors and the people who regularly use the bus and asked a few discreet questions, very careful questions here and there. This was her way of knowing. So she picked up various small details about the bus journey. So that shows that she must have been a very clever child. She was planning a journey on her own. That too at the age of eight. Let us see what happens next. But before that I have another question for you. What do you think Wally was planning to do? Wally was planning to go to the town and then return back by the same bus. The fare was 30 paisa one way and the ride took 45 minutes. In this way, she planned that she would be back by 2.45 p.m. if she took the bus at 1 p.m. What an interesting moment in the story this is. Will she head out? Will she go? What do you think? These are a few questions. Do you think she will go? Yes or no? What do you feel? What is your strong feeling? I think we all get this feeling that she will head out. Head out means she will definitely go. What will happen to her? Now there is some worry. She is just a child. Maybe she will enjoy, maybe you know she will be scared, but we will come to know about it in the second part of the story. You know very well that you must listen to your parents and take care to be safe. So how does this adventure play out now? Are you worried about Wally? 
because you know in today's world we should not go out without telling our parents that is the first let lesson we should remember. We must talk to the parents even if we are going out with friends our parents should know where are we going. Though at class 10 you are mature, you are sensible, you understand the world around you but still parents need to be informed we must discuss with them. Here Wali is planning a trip on her own are you worried about Wali? Suppose you have a younger brother or sister who is just 8 or 10 years old and he or she does that won't you be worried? Yes you would be all of us would be worried. So I think here is a little lesson for all of us that we must share things with our parents we must seek their advice as well as permission. With this we have come to the end of part 1 and also the session. I hope you enjoyed listening to the story in part 1. Now get ready for part 2. The task for you is to read part 2 on your own. It is not a difficult story you can read it on your own and and then we will discuss in the next session. Happy reading, thank you.